Do you know how secure your Android phone really is? A question that may seem simple, but holds a world of implications. In today's digital age, our smartphones are more than just communication devices. There are personal assistants, our memory keepers, our wallets, and sometimes there are secrets keepers. So, it's only fair that we take the time to understand and secure these little powerhouses that hold fragments of our lives. In the next 20 minutes, we're going to take a deep dive into the world of Android phone security. It's not just about setting a passcode or fingerprint lock anymore, though th those are important first steps. It's about understanding the nuances of our devices, the settings that are often overlooked, and the measures that can make all the difference in securing our data. We'll start by exploring how to access your phone's security settings, a treasure trove of customizable options to enhance your device's safety. Then we'll guide you on setting up a screen lock, a basic yet crucial line of defense. But we won't stop there. We'll delve into the world of biometrics, showing you how to set up fingerprint and face unlock features. What happens if your phone gets lost or stolen? Don't worry, we've got you covered. We'll discuss how to enable the Find My Device feature, a lifesaver in such situations. We'll also touch on setting up safe browsing, app permissions, regular updates, and the all-important two-step verification. We understand that the realm of phone security might seem daunting, but remember, every step you take towards securing your device is a step towards protecting your personal data, your memories, your hard-earned money, and your peace of mind. So, are you ready to safeguard your Android phone? Let's dive in. Scene Script First things first, you need to know how to access your phone's security settings. Embarking on this journey begins with unlocking your Android phone. From your home screen, you'll want to swipe upwards to reveal your full list of applications. Look for that little gear symbol. That's your settings app, the command center of your device. Tap on it to enter the world of customization and control. Once you're inside the settings app, you'll notice a list of options, each representing a different aspect of your phone's functionality. The one we're interested in today is labeled security. It may be nestled among other options like display, sound, and battery, but don't let it hide from you. Once you find it, tap on security to dive deeper into the realm of device protection. Now, as you enter the security settings, you'll be greeted by a menu filled with several options. Each option serves a unique purpose in the defense of your device. There's the screen lock, which controls how you unlock your device, fingerprint and face unlock for biometric security options, and find my device to help you locate your phone if it ever goes missing. You'll also spot safe browsing, which helps protect you from malicious websites when you're surfing the web, and app permissions, which lets you control what information individual apps can access. There's also a section for regular updates, ensuring your device stays up to date with the latest security patches. Each of these settings is a tool in your security toolkit, and understanding them is the key to effectively using them. Don't worry if it seems overwhelming at first, we're going to dive into each of these options one by one in the upcoming scenes. Now that you know how to access these settings, it's time to learn how to modify them. And remember, the power to secure your device lies in your hands, let's unlock it together. One of the basic yet crucial steps for securing your Android phone is setting up a screen lock. This is where you begin to fortify your Android device. A screen lock is your first line of defense, a virtual guard standing between your private information and any prying eyes. There are several types of screen locks that you can opt for, each with its own level of security and convenience. First up is the pin lock. This is a combination of numbers that you'll have to enter every time you unlock your phone. It's simple and straightforward to set up. You just need to navigate to the security section in your phone settings, tap on screen lock, and then choose pin. You'll then be prompted to enter your preferred combination of four or more digits. Next, we have the pattern lock. Instead of numbers, you draw a pattern connecting the dots on the screen. The pattern lock can be a fun and quick way to unlock your device, especially if you're good at remembering shapes and patterns. Just like with the pin lock, you can set this up by going to the screen lock options in your security settings. If you want something more traditional, you can opt for the password lock. This is the most secure type of screen lock, as it allows for combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols. However, it can be a bit cumbersome if your password is long and complex. To set it up, you simply need to select password in the screen lock options. Lastly, we have the swipe lock. It's the least secure option as anyone can swipe to unlock your phone, but it's the most convenient, especially if you're not too concerned about security. 
You can set it up the same way you set up the other types of screen locks. Remember, the type of screen lock you choose will depend on your needs and how much security you want for your phone. But no matter which one you pick, setting up a screen lock is a step in the right direction. With a screen lock in place, you've added a strong first line of defense to your phone. For added security and convenience, you can also set up fingerprint and face unlock on your Android phone. Let's walk through the process for both. To set up fingerprint unlock, head over to your phone settings. Scroll down and tap on security. From there, you'll see an option for fingerprint. Tap on it and you'll be prompted to create a backup password or PIN in case your fingerprints aren't recognized. Once that's done, place your finger on the sensor, usually located on the back or side of your phone. Lift and rest your finger on the sensor multiple times until the on-screen fingerprint image is fully shaded. That's it. You're all set. Now, let's move on to face unlock. The process is quite similar. Go back to security in your phone settings and tap on face unlock. You'll be asked to set up a backup password or PIN. After that, hold your phone at eye level and follow the on-screen instructions to register your face. The process is quick and straightforward. Using fingerprint and face unlock certainly adds a layer of security and convenience to accessing your phone. However, it's important to also consider the potential downsides. Fingerprint scanners can sometimes fail to recognize your print if your fingers are wet or dirty. As for face unlock, it might struggle in low light conditions or if you're wearing glasses or a hat. Moreover, some face unlock systems might be less secure, potentially allowing access with a photo of your face. To mitigate these risks, it's recommended to always have a strong password or PIN as a backup. Also, regularly clean your fingerprint sensor and make sure to set up face unlock in a well-lit area without any accessories on your face for the best results. In conclusion, while fingerprint and face unlock can provide additional security and convenience, they should be used in conjunction with other security measures for the most effective protection. Remember, the goal is to make your Android phone as secure as possible while still maintaining ease of use. Fingerprint and face unlock can provide additional security layers to your Android phone. Secure, convenient, and quick, these features are worth considering in your security mix. What if you lose your phone? The Find My Device feature comes to the rescue. Imagine this scenario. You've misplaced your phone. It's not under the couch cushions or on the kitchen counter. Panic sets in as you realize you may have left it somewhere. But wait, there's no need to panic because you've enabled the Find My Device feature on your Android phone. Find My Device is a built-in security feature of Android that allows you to locate, ring, or wipe your device if you lose it. It's like having a personal detective dedicated to finding your lost phone. To enable Find My Device, you'll need to go to your phone's settings. From there, navigate to the Security and AMP Location section. Note that on some models, this could be under Lock Screen and Security, or Biometric and Security. Within this section, you'll find the Find My Device option. Tap on it and switch it on. But remember, for Find My Device to work, your device must be turned on, signed into a Google account, connected to mobile data or Wi-Fi, visible on Google Play, and have Location and Find My Device turned on. Once enabled, you'll be able to use the Find My Device app or visit the Find My Device website on any browser to locate your lost phone. The site will display your phone's last known location on a map. You can also make your phone ring at full volume for 5 minutes to help you find it if it's nearby. And if you think your phone has been stolen or you can't find it, you can remotely erase all the data on your phone to protect your personal information. That's it. You've now armed yourself with a powerful tool to find your lost phone. But remember, prevention is always better than cure. Always keep your phone in a secure place and be mindful of where you leave it. With Find My Device activated, you're prepared even if your phone gets lost or stolen. The internet can be a wild place. Let's make sure you're protected while browsing. So, what exactly is safe browsing? Picture it as your very own internet bodyguard, keeping you safe from harmful websites that might try to steal your personal information or attack your device with malicious software. Let's dive into how to enable this crucial feature on your Android phone. It's important to note that the process may vary slightly depending on the browser you use, but don't worry, we've got you covered. If you're a fan of Google Chrome, start by opening the app. Tap the three-dot menu on the top right corner, then select Settings. Scroll until you find Privacy and Security, then tap Safe Browsing. 
you'll see three options, enhanced, standard, and no protection. Enhanced offers the highest level of protection, so we recommend going with that one. For those of you using Firefox, the process is just as simple. Open the app, tap the three-dot menu in the corner, then select Settings. Look for Enhanced Tracking Protection, and ensure it's set to Strict to give you the best protection. And for the Opera users out there, open the app and tap the O at the bottom, then select Settings. Scroll down to find Security and make sure Fraud and Malware Protection is switched on. But what if you're using a less known browser or a custom one? While the exact steps might differ, the principle remains the same. Look for a Settings or Options menu, find the Privacy or Security section, and search for a safe browsing or similar feature. If you're unsure, a quick online search can usually give you the steps for your specific browser. Remember, safe browsing isn't a guaranteed shield against all internet threats, but it's a powerful tool that can significantly reduce your risk. It's like wearing a seatbelt while driving. It won't prevent all accidents, but it drastically improves your safety. Safe browsing shields you from harmful websites and keeps your online experience secure. So go ahead, enable safe browsing, and navigate the wild landscape of the internet with a little more peace of mind. Apps asking for permissions can be tricky. Let's learn how to manage them. Imagine you've just downloaded a new app and it's asking for a bunch of permissions. These permissions might include access to your camera, microphone, contacts, or location. But what does that mean? And why does the app need them? In a nutshell, app permissions are the privileges an app has to access certain areas of your device. For instance, a photo editing app might need access to your camera and photo gallery in order to function. However, not all permissions requested by an app are necessary for it to work. And this is where it gets tricky and where we need to be vigilant. When an app asks for permissions, it's important to consider whether the permissions are necessary for the app's functions. Is it a mapping app asking for your location? That sounds reasonable. But if it's a simple calculator app asking for your contacts, you might want to think twice. So how can you manage these permissions to ensure your privacy and security? It's easier than you might think. On your Android device, go to settings, then apps and select the app you want to manage. Once you've opened the app settings, you can see a section called permissions. Here you can see what permissions the app has and toggle them on or off. Remember, it's always a good idea to only allow necessary permissions. But what if you're not sure what permissions are necessary? A good rule of thumb is to consider what the app does. If it doesn't make sense for the app to need a certain permission, it's probably safe to deny it. Of course, if you deny a permission and the app doesn't work as expected, you can always go back and enable it. But remember, it's better to be safe than sorry. Managing your app permissions isn't just about privacy. It's also about security. By controlling what data your apps can access, you're taking a big step towards protecting your device, your data, and yourself. By managing app permissions, you control what data your apps can access. Regular updates are not just about new features, they're about security too. You see, the world of technology is ever-evolving, and so are the threats that come with it. Cyber criminals are always on the hunt, looking for new ways to exploit vulnerabilities in your device. This is where regular software updates come into play. Imagine software updates as a shield, a protective barrier that stands between your device and these potential threats. Each update brings with it patches that fix known bugs and vulnerabilities, making your device more secure and less prone to attacks. It's like a game of cat and mouse where the software developers are continually trying to stay one step ahead of the hackers. Now let's talk about how to enable automatic updates on your Android phone. It's a straightforward process. You need to go to your settings, scroll down to the About Phone section and tap on Software Updates. From there, you can enable automatic updates. This way your phone will automatically download and install the latest updates when connected to Wi-Fi, ensuring you always have the latest security patches. It's worth noting that these updates can sometimes take a while to install and your phone may need to restart. But don't let this deter you. Remember, these updates are crucial for your device's security. It's a small trade-off for the peace of mind knowing that your device is protected. There's also the added bonus of new features and improvements. Each update often comes with performance enhancements that make your device faster and more efficient. Plus, you get to enjoy all the latest features that Android has to offer. In conclusion, regular software updates are a fundamental part of maintaining your Android phone's security. It's not just about staying up to date with the latest features, but also about keeping your device safe from potential threats. So, 
Don't forget to check for updates regularly and enable automatic updates if you haven't already done so. Keeping your phone updated ensures you have the latest security patches and fixes. Two-step verification is an extra layer of security for your accounts. This is a powerful tool that adds an extra line of defense to your digital life. But what exactly is it? Well, picture this. First, you enter your password. Then, as a second step, you need to provide another proof of identity, like a code sent to your phone. This is two-step verification in a nutshell. Imagine a thief who somehow gets hold of your password. With two-step verification turned on, they'll be stopped in their tracks when asked for that second step, which only you can provide. It's like having a vault with two completely different locks. Even if they crack one, they still can't get in. So, how do you set this up? It's quite simple. Let's walk through it together. Most of your accounts on your Android phone, be it Gmail, Facebook, or even your banking app, offer this feature. Usually, you'll find it under the security settings of the app. Look for something like two-step verification, two-factor authentication, or multi-factor authentication. Once you've located this, you'll typically have a choice. You can choose to receive a code via text message or use an authenticator app. The text message option is straightforward. Every time you log in, you'll receive a code on your phone that you'll need to enter. The authenticator app option is a bit more secure. These apps generate a code that changes every few seconds. You'll need to open the app and enter the current code to log in. Remember, this is your security we're talking about. It may seem like a bit of a hassle, but it's a small price to pay for the peace of mind it provides. So there you have it. With two-step verification, you've added an extra layer of security, making your Android phone that much safer. With two-step verification, even if someone knows your password, they can't access your account. It's time to outsmart the hackers and take control of your digital life. You've come a long way in securing your Android phone. Let's do a quick recap. We started our journey by accessing the phone security settings, the gateway to a safer Android experience. Here, you found a multitude of options designed to protect your device and your data. Remember, it's the first line of defense against potential threats. From there, we dove into setting up a screen lock. It's a simple yet crucial step, providing a basic barrier against unauthorized access. Whether you chose a pattern, a PIN, or a password, you've made it that much harder for prying eyes to get in. Next, we explored the wonders of biometrics with fingerprint and face unlock. These features offer an extra layer of security, using unique physical characteristics only you possess. It's like having a high-tech lock only you can open. We then ventured into the realms of device tracking with the Find My Device feature. By enabling this, you've given yourself a fighting chance of recovering your phone if it ever gets lost or stolen. Our journey continued to the world of web safety with safe browsing. By setting this up, you're protecting yourself from malicious websites that could potentially harm your device or steal your data. We then touched on app permissions, emphasizing the importance of knowing what access you're granting to your apps. Remember, a little vigilance here can go a long way in safeguarding your personal information. Next, we stress the importance of regular updates. These not only provide new features, but also crucial security patches. So, keep your Android up to date for a smooth, secure experience. We wrapped up the tutorial with two-step verification, adding an additional layer of protection to your Google account. It's like having a second lock on your digital life. Remember, the safety of your Android phone is in your hands. Stay safe and secure. Each step you've taken today is a step towards a safer, more secure digital life. So keep these lessons in mind and your Android device will thank you.